Hello everyone, in this video we are going to be going through the first page of the review for the semester test. And for each question you get right on this review, I'm going to be adding points to your semester exam score. So it's in your best interest to take all of my help and apply it in your own paper. For the first one, it wants us to write an equation through the points 6, 8, and 20, negative 8. If we have two points, then the first thing we're going to need is the slope. The slope is going to be equal to the y's subtracting each other. So I'm going to use this as y2, this is y1, 8 minus negative 8 on top of 6 minus 20 will make 16 over negative 14, which reduces to 8 over negative 7. So my slope is 8 over negative 7. Then you take that and you write it into an equation. 8 over negative 7 times x plus b. Just slope-intercept form. Then we need to find what b is equal to. We don't know what b is, but we do know what y is and x is. So we're going to take one of these coordinates from the top, and I'm going to take 6 and 8. I'm going to put 8 for y. And I'm going to put 6 for x. Then we're going to multiply the 8 over negative 7 times 6. 8 times 6 is a 48 over negative 7 is equal to 8 plus b. We're going to need to move 48 over negative 7 to the other side. We're going to do that by adding it. We're going to add 48 over negative 7. Well, I guess it'll just be a positive 7 now. We're going to add 48 over 7 to the other side. 48 over 7 plus 8. So they canceled out on the right. All we have on the right side now is b is equal to 8 plus 48 over 7. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the 48 over 7 into a mixed number. 7 would go into 49 7 times, but 7 can't fit into 48 completely, but it could do it 6 times. 7 fits into 48 6 times with 6 remaining. So I'm going to put 6 and 6 sevenths as the remainder. Plus 8. 6 plus 8 is 14 b is equal to 14 and then we also have that 6 sevenths so 14 and 6 sevenths is our b so my final equation is going to be i'm going to put it right here 14 and 6 sevenths plus negative 8 divided by 7 x the only difficult part about that was that there was a fraction if you converted those into decimal form using a calculator, that would be fine. Write an equation that's parallel to number one. Okay, so when it's talking about this parallel one, it's talking about number one as in the one we just did. So we want something that's parallel to the very first question. That means it's going to need the same slope. m is equal to negative 8 over 7. Because multiplication um, is commutative, that negative, this negative, it doesn't matter if you put the negative on the top with the 8, on the bottom with the 7, or out to the side applying to either one. As long as there is only single negative attached to this fraction, all of these versions of the fraction are the same thing. It doesn't matter if you put the negative on the top, on the bottom, or off to the side, as long as this fraction has one negative in it. I just want you to know that because it took me a long time before I finally realized it doesn't matter where I put that negative. Now we're going to go through the point 10, 2. So that means that when we make our slope-intercept equation with that same slope as the first one, the only thing that's different in this one is that we're going to be using 10 for x, and 2 for y. 
negative 8 times 10 is negative 80. We're going to add this number to the left side. We're going to add 80 over 7 to both sides. And now we're going to change the 80 over 7 into a mixed number. 7 fits into 80 more than 10 times. 11 times would make 77, and it would leave 3 sevenths remaining. So 80 divided by 7 is 11 and 3 sevenths. 11 and 3 sevenths plus 2. You add the whole numbers together. That's 13 and 3 sevenths. 11 and 3 sevenths plus 2 is going to be 13 and 3 sevenths. B is equal to 13 and, oh, I keep on doing that mistake. 13 is the whole number, and 3 sevenths is the part it, that's a fraction still. So my Y is equal to negative 8 sevenths times X plus 13 and 3 sevenths. Done. For the intersection, for this one that's number three, when we're solving for the intersection, that means we want to know when are these two lines, these, I'm just drawing random lines, when are these two lines going to intersect? If two lines are intersecting, then that means that they have the same spot. They are going to be at the same spot at the same time. So what that means is they have the same x and y. When two lines intersect, they have the same x and the y. Look at what both of these are solved for. Both of these equations are solved for y. Since they're both solved for y, and they're going to be the same y, same y, that means that these two y's are equal. The two y's are equal to each other. 4 fifths x minus 2 is equal to y, and 4 fifths x plus 2 is going to be equal to the same y. Since they're equal to each other, we don't have to worry about the middle part because of the one of the very first properties that I showed you. I don't remember which one it is exactly. Um, maybe it's like the uh, identity property or something where a is equal to a, y is equal to the left, y is equal to the right, so the left is equal to the right. Now we're just going to solve it for x, if possible. So let's move the 2 to the right, and that's going to make 4 fifths x plus 4 is equal to 4 fifths x. And now let's get the x's on the left. So let's subtract 4 fifths x. And what would be 4 fifths x minus 4 fifths x? It's going to be 0. 0 equals 4. Everything on the left side canceled out. The x is on the right side canceled out, and we have a 4 left over. Since the left side canceled out, that means that it's 0 now. 0 is equal to 4. Is that true? This is not true. So that means no solution. And another way that we could see that this is no solution is if you look at these two equations that we started with, 4 fifths x minus 2 and 4 fifths x plus 2, they're actually the same exact equation, it's just that the y-intercept changed. Since the slopes are the same, those are two parallel lines. And if they're parallel, that means that they're not intersecting. So this was actually something to make you just realize that parallel lines don't intersect, and there is no solution between them. But in this one, these are not parallel lines. You can see that we have 4 fifths, and we have negative 5 fourths, so this one would actually be perpendicular. You're going to solve it the same way, to where you just say y is equal to one of the equations, 
and y is also equal to the other equation. Then once their two sides are equal, you can ignore the y part and you just solve for x. What are the key attributes of this? That just means describe it like the slope is equal to negative 2, the y-intercept is equal to 5, the x-intercept is equal to, well, you'd have to solve for it, 0 equals negative 2x plus 5. To find the x-intercept, you put 0 for y, then you solve. So the x-intercept is equal to 5 over 2 for x. The only other thing you could say is that this is like, compared to the parent function, like in this next one, um, how do they compare? Okay, well, let's just look at number six. What had happened to the previous question in order to make this g of x right here? What happened to f of x to get negative 4x plus 10? If we compare the slopes, this one's negative 2, this slope is negative 4. If we compare the y-intercepts, the first one has 5 and the second one has 10. So all that happened was g of x is twice or 2 times f of x. And that's it. That's the only transformation that happened. There was nothing else other than that. Domain and range should be pretty easy, but just to make sure... The domain, just like this graph shows, starts, the domain measures the x's. So domain is going to be the x's, and the x's are going to be bigger than whatever it's starting with. And it looks like we have a closed dot, so it's going to be bigger than or equal to negative 5. And the x's are going to be smaller than, well, if we look at this line down here, it's going to continue forever, so it's going to keep on going to infinity. The y's, the y's are starting, the lowest y is negative infinity, and the highest y it reaches is 5. And that's the domain, that's the range. Do something similar right here. Find both intercepts, so that means one at a time, we're going to solve 4x minus 5. We're going to put 0 for y. You're going to solve this one for x. And you're going to put 4 times 0 to solve for the y-intercept. Oh, well, it's just going to be y equals negative 5. So as an ordered pair, this one would be... 0, negative 5, well this one is 5 fourths comma 0. That's the first page. I hope this video helped you. I'll make another one for the second page tomorrow.